I'm going to turn to the worst shooting now in the history of the New York City subway. It took place yesterday morning. Now several law enforcement agencies are looking for 62-year-old Frank James. The NYPD identified him last night as a person of interest nearly 12 hours after 10 people were shot at the 36th Street Station in Brooklyn. Police say they connected James to the scene after officers found the keys to a U-Haul van he rented in Philadelphia and ditched five miles from the station where the attack took place. Joining us now, former New York City Police Commissioner Dermot Shea. Mr. Commissioner, thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, the pursuit of this person of interest, Mr. James, continues this morning. Uh, what are New York City police officers, what is the FBI doing right now, do you suspect? We've become accustomed to your former department moving so quickly to apprehend people like this. What do you suspect they're doing right now to find him? Well, well, when the incident happened yesterday and you see the immediate rush of first responders, you have to you have to recognize that there are there are a number of duties being performed at the same time. So there are people trying to save lives. Certainly there's trying to have people start the investigation, but not talked about as much. There's another group of people that are immediately mobilized and their purpose is simple. Their purpose is to go out and apprehend people once they are identified. Sometimes in investigations, it may take uh, minutes or hours. Sometimes it makes may take days. But in an incident of this magnitude, immediately members of the Regional Fugitive Task Force will be mobilized and on standby so that when the appropriate time comes, they're ready to go. They're doing workups on any individuals that are identified. And, and I will tell you, they are simply the best of the best. They're comprised up of U.S. Marshals, NYPD assets, state police, FBI and others working in a cohesive unit that can literally reach out across the country and touch people wherever they are. So I, I, I believe that they are feverishly right now trying to identify where this individual is and, and speak to him as quickly as possible. Commissioner, and certainly this individual does not have known ties to New York anyway, so I would assume to your point that would mean that the search is expanding well beyond the state's borders. But I also wanted you to weigh in, if you will, on the idea of whether this was an act of terrorism or not. We heard from the governor and mayor yesterday sort of shy away from that, at least initially, uh, although we heard from Mayor Adams certainly suggest that it was a terrifying act. What is the distinction? Why wouldn't this be called an act of, of, of domestic terrorism? Yeah, and I think that people get hung up on this. And certainly from my point of view, if you're on that train car, it doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference. Let's be clear about that. The distinction comes in because once something is designated with that official title and, and there are protocols to follow, then the investigation in, in its essence gets handed off to federal authorities. So uh, what, what the public should know though, is that from, from the, the get-go, uh, members of the federal authorities are with the NYPD, not, not since this incident happened. They're with them every single day here in New York City, working alongside each other on criminal investigations, on everything from drugs, to uh, organize crime, to also anti-terror anti activity. So that distinction really has no effect in slowing down the investigation. And, and these things are going on parallel tracks. And, and as investigation proceeds and investi information comes in, and it becomes clearer what the motivation was, then there can be an official handoff. But right now, the, what's on first and foremost on everyone's mind is, find this individual and make sure that nothing else happens. So, Commissioner, to the points that you just raised in that answer, yesterday was another amazing display of coherent response to an act that terrified the city, terrified a lot of people just reading and hearing about it. An enormous response. Multiple numbers of people from different units of the police department, fire department, emergency services unit, is there a single commander on site? How does the command structure work in a situation like yesterday? Yeah, there absolutely is. Uh, any incident, there is a protocol. There's actually a protocol for any incident that happens in New York City. So the acronym is, is here in the city is CIMS, C-I-M-S, the Citywide Incident Management System. You know, if a tree falls down somewhere, who's in charge? If there's an accident on the in the Hudson River, Who's in charge? Well, on an incident like this, it's the NYPD in charge. There is a clearly defined uh, commander at the scene. But underneath that, the key part is all city agencies funneling in, working together. The key is here, any information 
everyone knows their tasks, everyone knows what to do, and any information flows freely with the people that need it. And just about 24 hours now since that attack, law enforcement still looking for 62-year-old man named Frank James. Former New York City Police Commissioner Dermot Shea, thanks so much for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.